In these two short videos, I'm going to show you how to do the two challenge questions on the vector review that I gave you in the first class. Just to show you my expectation of how competent you are with vectors. And if you're not, hopefully this will help clear things up. So the very first question, we have two vectors, A and B, and we want the components of one of them that is parallel to the other one. And we want the magnitude of that. And this is a procedure that we often do. And so we give it a special name. This procedure is called projection. We're projecting A onto B, which means we're finding the parallel part of A that is parallel to B, and we want the size of it in this case. There's one more step you can do to get the actual vector, and I'll quickly talk about that towards the end. In any case, we're trying to project A onto B. So to do that, we're given two vectors in 3D space in IJK form, and it might be a little hard to visualize it. So I've looked up this free 3D vector plotter at academo.org. Great little software program helps you look at and visualize vectors very easily. So I've already keyed in my two vectors. So blue is A and red is B. So showing you here more or less in the X, Z plane. We got X running down left, right, Z running up and down, and Y coming in and out of the page. We can of course rotate it because it is 3D. So as you rotate it, you'll see different views of it and things will look different. But keep in mind what we're trying to do. So here we have vector A. Let's add some arrows because they are vectors. And vector B over here. Now vector B defines a certain direction in space. We can of course find the unit vector of that very easily. And we want the part of A that is parallel to that line, that dotted line I just drew. So there's a component that if you drag it down here, there's a certain component of A that is parallel to that direction. And that's what we call projecting. We're projecting this long vector A. We're just keeping the part that is along this red dotted line. And then on top of that, we only want the magnitude of that. So then let's think about this. Under what circumstances do we deal with the parallel components of a vector? That, of course, is the dot product. The dot product is defined to be the magnitude of the parallel components of one of the vector multiplied by the magnitude of the other. And of course, we can choose which one we take the parallelness of. And in this case, if we choose the A to be the parallel one, then we can figure out this part and we can find out the magnitude of B fairly easily and divide and we should get our answer. So let's do A dot B then. We're going to be writing it out a little lengthier with the component forms just to show you a little more clearly, but it's not really necessary in the long run. All you have to do is to work out the dot product once you get comfortable with it without having to write all this notation down. Uh, of course, signs matter, so keep that in mind. So we have four minus six minus six, giving us negative eight. And the negative here just means that the parallel component is the opposite direction of B instead of with the direction of B, just the way the projection worked out, as we could have seen from the 3D plot. Then the magnitude of B is quite trivial. It's of course the square root of BX squared plus BY squared plus BZ squared. Again, I'm going to show a little more work than usual. And of course the negative goes away. And if you work that out, you should get 16 plus 9 plus 4, square root of 29. The last step is quite trivial. If we just want the magnitude, we basically want the magnitude or the absolute value of the dot product because the negative sign is not going to make any sense in this case. We just want the length of it overall divided by the magnitude of B. So we have those both those values. So we have instead of negative 8, we're going to positive 8 divided by square root of 29. Calculator would give you 1.4855. The final answer works out to be about 1.5 because the initial numbers have two sig figs, so let's keep two sig figs. And voila! In order to project a vector onto a particular direction, we find the dot product of the two and then divide by the length of the vector that defines the direction. You can save even more work if you do the dot product with a unit vector. So the length of the thing that defines the direction is one, so you don't have to worry about that. 
couple extension possible if you actually want the entire vector that is parallel itself you could take the magnitude and multiply that by the unit vector of b because that defines the direction of course then you have to remember the sign instead of ignoring the sign altogether we have to keep that sign in mind because sometimes it could be in opposite direction as in this case Another extension is if you want the perpendicular component of A instead of the parallel component, what you do is you go through all the steps and you find out the parallel component and then the perpendicular part is just your overall vector minus the parallel part because the projection, if you add up the parallel part with the perpendicular part, they must add up to the overall vector originally. So doing a simple vector subtraction will get you the other part. You can hopefully see how projection is done and also how it can lead us to other useful information for finding out particular parallel or perpendicular components of a vector in any general direction instead of just simple, you know, XYZ, IJK type deal.